Waikato farmers John and Margaret Fisher were early adopters of robotic milking systems in New Zealand. Their system had to be adapted to work with pasture-based farming, unlike the barn-based operations common in Europe where the systems were originally designed. They installed four robots in an automated system in 2011, and five years on, John shares his experiences in setting up an ongoing operation. This farm is 78 effective hectares. We have been running about 320 cows the last few years. Cut back this current season to 300, just because of the economics, trying to reduce the feed inputs. I first got interested in robotics when Dairy NZ predecessor had Greenfield's research farm going at Rurikura. I was looking at refencing this farm and so I just thought, well, I should see how far away these robotics are and just whether we should think about fencing for robotics. Um, and I guess through that process, got a bit hooked on them. The three-way grazing was happening at the time, which showed that they could do pretty similar production with the three-way grazing, and just decided it was something I wanted to do in my lifetime. And there was a bit of a lifestyle thing there. I guess under a herringbone system, I either had to relieve the staff myself or get relief staff in. I didn't really want to be doing that. But probably the biggest plus with the robots is we don't need relief staff. I relieve the manager, but it's not such a big task to do that most of the year. We reduced our labour requirement a bit, but not as much as you'd think. There's still all the other jobs to be done on the farm, but the labour you have on the farm probably doesn't do the same hours that you would on a conventional system, like you can start at 7 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes during the springtime, we'll, carving time will start at 6 o'clock. Pretty regularly knock off at five o'clock. You probably need pretty good pasture management skills and stock management skills as well, or stock sense, because you're not seeing the cows all the time, and so you just need to be able to watch out for those those odd sick cows. It probably doesn't shoot a sheer milker type arrangement in the traditional sense for herd owning, because if you bring a new herd in, you've got to train it for the robots. I guess some sort of equity partnership might work. We have achieved much better empty rates, like around 5 or 6% since we've been in the robots. It's difficult to know exactly what that's due to. We probably had been feeding the cows better, I would say, because the robotic system does highlight when the cows are being underfed more. When they run out of pasture, they come back to the robots. But also, at mating time, you have very little else to do. We've basically gone back to the traditional. We still just tail paint and observe. And um, I think that's probably a factor in it too, that we have the time to put into mating at that time of the year. Well, we've got this new shelter over this feeding, drafting sort of holding area. Half of it was to get rainwater out of the effluent. We've got quite a big concrete area here and that was adding stress to our effluent system and heavy rain. And the other thing was shade for the cows in the summer, keep them cool. Well, when the cows come back from the paddocks and they first come into the first, what we call, selection gate here, and that selection gate IDs them, and if they're due for milking, it'll let them go straight ahead to the robots, but if they're not due for milking, it will then draft them left or right, depending on where the next, next grazing paddock is. Or if they've come back too quickly, it'll actually put them back to where they were. We can individualise that for some cows, like currently the freshly calved cows can get in about every six hours, whereas the late lactation cows are out about every 10 hours that they can get in. The traction of the robots was to go back to treating cows as individuals. The computer system records each individual cow's production every day, and we can control how often each individual cow is milked as well with the software that's in the system. We put 280 cows in here in the first day. Really, that needed about 10 people. Um, to put them through, it took 16 hours, put those 280 through the first time. And then we started, had a few hours off and started again, it was a bit of a shift going on. And, um, but by about the third day, we were down to four people and probably after a week, down to three people. Yeah, the cows in the system can freely move in and out of the paddocks. So we just left the gates open in the paddocks and they started wandering back when they were looking for some more feed or wanted to be milked. When the cow comes in for a very first milking in a robot, we actually have to teach the robot her teat positioning. And so we have like a joystick that works the robot arm, and you place the robot arm next to each teat and record the positioning of that teat. And then quite often we will just cup that cow by hand for that first milking, 
just so she gets milked properly. And then you just got to keep an eye on the next few days that the robot is finding her teats because freshly carved cows often have swollen udders and until that swelling goes down and after a few days it can have a bit of trouble. But then as, as the season goes on, as the cow starts going to her peak production and the udder gets tighter and tighter, the robot remembers after each milking just where those teats are and keeps changing its memory. There's internet connection to the cow shed and cell phone connection, so we get regular alerts, what we call stop alerts, if a robot stops, and usually we've got to respond to that and come and see what the problem is. Probably only getting one of those a week at the moment, but you'll get other alerts like a low yield on a cow, which you don't have to respond to immediately, but you just sort of note it. Often it's just because the robot hasn't managed to cut one of the teats, but the system lets, lets the cow out of the robot and drafts her back in to have a second go at her. So it's pretty difficult for a cow to get away from here without being milked properly because it, it has this uh, expected yield every milking and if it doesn't get within 80% of that expected yield it'll, it'll put her around again and try and milk her again. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.